first working day. And what we have to do is to prepare the ground for the assumption of power to have meaning. And that is to be able to deliver services to the government. Secretary General was mandated to call all the permanent secretaries in order to tell them to prepare their dossier, the strategic plans which are currently available, the policies, the plans, the projects, their budget line, and continue to do their work and guide the departments to continue to function normally in preparation for the new ministers who will be presiding over the affairs of those ministries. The personal management of his permanent secretary and inspector general police were mandated to visit the ministry and the public corporation in order to fight now their current situation. And as I appear, because the time was already fixed for this press conference, I must say they have done uh, work that is efficient because we know the current situation. The only place that is left is uh, the GCCA so that uh, we will be able to complete the force assessment of the state of things after the hand of power. There had been information to the public about the central bank. It was of particular concern. But the Inspector General of Police told me that everything is intact. He has spoken to the Governor and they really have no problem because they are working and the banks are working in the country. We have also been informed of some bit of administrative contradictions in terms of instructions given to certain ECOWAS uh, heads and we are now resolving those issues by informing the president to communicate to the ECOWAS authorities so that the mission that is here will have no contradiction in terms of the service delivery such as the ports and the airport. We've been informed that cooperation is now being effected so that there will be direct communication to those who have been given a responsibility prior to the settlement of the problem in peace. I believe all of you must realize that war was in the cards as negotiation proceeded and war meant directives being given to people in charge of certain units, whether it's Navy or the ground forces, so that they abide by certain directives. And attempts are being made now to harmonize all those directives. So in that domain, we must say that services are beginning to operate according to normal. We are assessing the difficulties they are experiencing because of the short a break off of administration in the country. Uh, only one institution has actually indicated uh, some difficulties which is now in terms of uh, uh, petrol uh, provision and uh, measures are being taken to ensure that what they are demanding and to facilitate the process with the address. So I must say that we
we anticipate that uh, by tomorrow uh, we will have full functioning service delivery system which will be utilized as a base for the government to begin to plan ahead. The second issue that has been of primary concern is the movement of the ECOWAS forces in the Gambia. That matter has also somehow been resolved in that understanding has been reached as to what their mandate is and discussions have taken place so that uh, the president uh, will have uh, the sole authority to determine what happens and the president has selected an aide, an aide who has been in charge of the armed forces of the Gambia and fully understands the armed forces who on the ground would be able to coordinate more effectively and efficiently with the ECOWA forces uh, so that any contradiction will be minimized and there will be people on the ground to address it without any difficulty. So we believe that uh, that will be the ultimate solution of the problem. And what is being planned is the ECOWAS forces who are here to integrate in the military camps that are available, fraternize with the other soldiers, to see that the issue is not another country coming and invading and dominating or uh, occupying Gambia, but ECOWAS forces showing solidarity to a particular country, which will be reciprocated when another country in the sub-region experiences the same difficulty. So in a sense, integration is moving to the level of collective sovereignty. That is, each country defending the republic and defending the right sovereignty of the people and where it is threatened they collectively come together to defend that sovereignty so that we continue to consolidate democracy in our sovereignty that is going to be the emphasis it's going to be the vision and it's going to be the mission statement of the ECOWAS forces in the land. That there must be forces of solidarity rather than the forces of occupation. And that solidarity will come by harmonization of the forces so that collectively their common structures will understand any mandate that should be fulfilled and will be fulfilled collectively. The third dimension is the issue of the country. I 